I'm Maxine Anderson with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition B, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 3rd. The Charter provides city employees with 12 weeks of paid parental leave to care for a child after birth or adoption or becoming a foster parent. If two employees qualify to take parental leave, they may not each take 12 weeks. Before receiving paid parental leave, an employee must first use all other paid leave, including sick, vacation, and floating holidays. Proposition B would allow each parent to take the maximum amount of paid parental leave for which they qualify for the birth adoption, or foster parenting of the same child if both parents are city employees, and provide city employees the opportunity to keep up to 40 hours of sick leave at the end of paid parental leave. A yes vote means you want to allow each parent to take the maximum amount of paid parental leave for which they qualify for the birth of the same child if both parents are city employees. A no vote means you do not want to make these changes to the charter. I'm here with Deanna Kizan, legislative aide with Supervisor Katie Tang, a proponent of Proposition B. We're also joined by Marcy Berry, vice chair of the Libertarian Party of San Francisco and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. I'd like to start with some opening remarks. Deanna? Why don't we start with you? Thank you so much for having me, Maxine. Um, to provide some context, in 2002, San Francisco voters voted on the strongest paid parental leave law in the nation. It provided for 12 weeks to 16 weeks for San Francisco city employees to take paid parental leave to take care of a child born, adopted, or placed into foster care within their homes. Ten, more than 10 years later, now that the national conversation has once again returned to paid parental leave and how we can support our families, our office wanted to look at the law again and see what we can do to strengthen these laws. And we noticed two things. One, if a, a city employee is married or in a domestic partnership with another city employee, they have to split that time. And we want to change it so that they each get the benefit equally to themselves. Two, um, they have to drain down their vacation and sick time and when you come back you have a sick child you have a or yourself sick and you need time off so we're allowing them to keep 40 hours of sick time for themselves before they access the benefit thank you very much thank you and marcy your your thank you for opinion of this proposition thank you very much for letting us uh, give this opinion um, we are not in favor of this proposition and we are coming from a place in the Libertarian Party where our first idea is to say, is this financially viable? Are we digging ourselves into all kinds of holes of unintended consequences and financial instability? So the city uh, employees in San Francisco already earn more than a lot of the little businesses all over the place who do not have any of these benefits and those are the people who are going to be paying for the city employees. So our point is that for every dollar that the city employee makes, some little guy out there is losing a dollar and that is the main reason that we oppose it. Thank you. Now to our first question and it will be directed to you, Marcy. Um, in your opinion, what are the people of San Francisco actually being asked to vote on in this particular measure? Could you give us your, your thoughts on that, please? Yes. Um, the the legisl legislation itself says, as Deanna mentioned, number one, it, it used to be that one parent got 12 weeks, with 16 weeks if there was a medical emergency as opposed to say, a family parental leave. The legislation will change from one parent to two parents. And so you now have, instead of one expense, two expenses. So both parents can now stay home. 
In addition to that, it used to be that, like every other small business owner or whatever, you had to use up all of your vacation, all of your leave, all of your sick leave. That's what I did when my child was born. Mm -hmm. Now it's different in that 40 hours of sleep, sick leave can be retained. And so you have sort of a double whammy there that it is not, as some people have said, just a technical adjustment. Mm -hmm. The uh, controller says you're talking about tops $1 million a year. Okay, thank you very much. And Deanna, your thoughts? Well, Marcy gave, gave a great summary, but with this measure, we are improving what the voters had voted on in 2002. So we have to work within the confines of what the voters voted on, so it applies specifically to city employees. We are saying that both parents in a, a relationship who have a child should get equal time to spend with their child. Um, it shouldn't have to be decided between the two who should split the time. Each should get that precious opportunity to bond with their children. There have been numerous studies of the importance of that bonding time on the children's health, on the parents' health, and this opportunity will allow those city employees who happen to be married or in a domestic partnership and who happen to be in this position to, to each have that equal time with the child, which is, is so important. The second part is the 40 hours um, to maintain. Again, as people may know, when they come back, they need that time to go back to their child. They might need to take care of their own health or their child's health because we have to work in the city, in the confines of the um, city passed a uh, charter amendment in 2002. We do want to set example for other employers to say, this is what the city is doing for our parents. This might be a great opportunity for you to look at your own policies to allow them to maintain 40 hours on the books because it makes sense. They need that time to come back after they come back from parental leave time because there are, there are going to be health opportunities that come afterwards. Okay. Thank you very much. And our next question, which I'm sure our viewers will be very interested in, is in your opinion, Deanna, we're going to start with you, what do you believe the fiscal impact will be on the city of doing something mm -hmm. such as this? Well, the controller's office, as Marcy mentioned, did do an estimate of what it could be on the city. However, it is a very rough estimate because we do not know how many employees are actually married or in a domestic partnership. We don't know how many will actually be able to take the leave. Um, we looked at our uh, data from the past and employees were taking on an average a month of paid parental leave because this is in addition to state and federal benefits. So in the end, um, it's up to the parent to decide how much time they need to spend with their child in addition to the other benefits they have. They also might have accumulated a lot of sick and vacation time. So it's hard to estimate. Uh, the controller's office did estimate half a million to a million, but it's hard to say what the actual number is given our parents' specific situations. Um, so the cost, we believe, is minimal compared to the unlasting benefits to the child, to the future citizens of our city um, in that bonding time with their parents. Okay, and Marcy? Yes. Um, it appears to me that indeed it's an open-ended expense, as you indicated. So it would seem to me that, the uh, yes, you do have to work with the confines of previous legislation voted by the voters. My job here today is to say, you know, think about it before you vote some more because it is totally open-ended. As far as the wonderful benefits that accrue to the child, of course, of course. However, don't forget that we're only talking about city employees. How about all the other people with the same situation? The only difference, of course, is, is that city employees have unlimited funds, just tax more people whereby the little business owner down the street cannot do that. And so you cannot just say, look at the wonderful job we're doing, you do the same. It's not, it's not the same thing. So this is where we're coming from. We're coming from a point that we're not saying, oh, looky, now we're giving both parents equal time. I want the city voters to say, let's give everybody equal time by giving the city employees the same thing as the little guy down the corner, the grocery store man, gives his employees. Okay. 
thank you very much for the, yep. for your comments. Now, um, this is a employee benefit issue that's being put before the voters. Um, do either of you, and we'll start with um, Marcy, <laughs> do you have an opinion on whether this these sorts of things should be on the ballot? Because at sometimes people say, well, why am I even voting on this? Because, so, it, oh, I'm sorry, I did ahead, not Marcy. mean to interrupt you. No? Uh, the, the answer, I think, is simple. Every time it involves money, you know, whether it's an additional tax, whether it's additional expense, it is, it has to go to the voters. And so even though we're talking about, as Deanna said, a minimal amount, you know, as I said before, we're nickeling and diming ourselves into bankruptcy. And so that's why the voters have a say-so. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Deanna? Well, again, in 2002, it was um, the decision of those people to put it on the ballot and to have the voters voted. And so because we are making changes to that specific law, we have to once again go to the ballot as well. Um, and, you know, issues like these, when it's based on city employees, Yes, this is a time for us to be an example for everybody else and to go off on what was originally voted on 2002, enhance it, and then in the future we are committed to discussing how we can um, broaden this out and see how we can um, support all of our families in the city. So definitely that is um, what is coming down. After, and now that this conversation is going because it is on the ballot, because it has reached a national level of discourse, we can further discuss how we can improve this for our small businesses, for our families who work um, in San Francisco in all different types of jobs. Okay, and Deanna, you must have been reading my mind because <laughs> my next question was gonna be um, on the fact that this has now become a national, uh, a matter of national interest. And the current administration, is, as a matter of fact, is pushing the issue of paid leave paid parental leave. So um, based on what we've heard, the discourse that we've heard, the information that we've gotten so far, as far as in, in the news, um, do you believe that um, this particular measure goes far enough, it should go further, or should we cap it off here? Do you have an opinion one way or another? Sure. Start with um, you, Deanna. I think this is, again, in line with what's been going on national and statewide. Um, we, the voters had the foresight in 2002, more than a decade ago, to already address this issue. Now the president has come out talking about it. Boston recently announced that they have six weeks on the books, which is great. Um, but we, again, are always striving to be a leader in supporting our families. That's why we took a look at the original law to see how we can improve that specific law and these two measures we believe do that in enhancing what we currently have. But this is not the end of that conversation going forward. We're, again, we're gonna look at how we can further support, further continue to lead the way because as, although we lead the way nationally, globally we are very far behind what other countries are doing to support their families. And as we've seen before in discussions, when the California uh, uh, Paid Family Leave Act went up, you know, employers were very concerned that it might hurt them as well uh, financially. I'm sure those same discussions happened 2002 to San Francisco. but we have not been impacted negatively by supporting our families and in, in fact I think it's the opposite we've received positive benefits from parents who come back refreshed who had that time with their children and now are able to both concentrate on their work and their family so we believe these two enhancements will continue that path and then we can look forward to see what we can do on a broader scale thank you very much yes. and Marcy I'd love to hear your remarks on that. right thank you um, this is, I can only come from a libertarian point of view. And the libertarian point of view strictly says government has very limited a job to do. In other words, parental leave and all that supporting families is simply not the business of government to do. But again, this is a minority view, meaning that libertarians are a minority in the city. And therefore, we are impacted by, you know, the great majority that wants the big government, that wants to have all of these benefits. Unfortunately, these people that vote do not for these uh, benefits are not realizing, guess who pays? They do. And in, they look, should look at their paycheck. And what I say 
you know, in tablings, when I'm talking to the public, look at your paycheck. Are you happy with what you see? If you see all these taxes disappearing, if your boss tells you, I can't give you a raise, the taxes are too high, then you ought to think, hmm, those benefits, somebody is paying for them, and that's me. So again, it's strictly from a libertarian point of view, which is very different from the big government point of view that San Francisco enjoys. Thank you very much. And now, this conversation has been great, but we do have to have our final remarks now. And Marcy, I'd like to start with you. Okay, thank you. Um, let me wrap up with just what we were thinking about in our meetings. And we were saying, okay, the idea, for, for example, uh, the, the legislation says that the employees may not have, quote, the financial resources to stay home on an unpaid leave. Yeah, that's right. None of them out there do. And it's not just the city employees. Another thing would be, for example, it, it helps to attract talent. My goodness, we have you know, a huge amount of people already in government. We don't need to attract any more. Uh, again, strictly from a libertarian point of view. Um, it, it helps with prosperity. Well, you know, you kind of have to look at the big picture. The big picture will tell you the more benefits you give, the higher the ability for one group to spend more money while the other group spends less. So we haven't achieved anything. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for your remarks. Great. Uh, Deanna? The voters voted in 2002 to provide these, this benefit for city employees, and we're just asking to look at that um, paid parental leave law and see what we can do to enhance. If you believe that two parents should be given the opportunity to spend the same amount of time with their child, if you believe that when they come back, they should have that opportunity to draw on what they have currently accrued for themselves for their um, sick time to go back and take care of their child after that six, uh, 12 to 16 week period, that there will be situations where they will have to come back and take care of themselves or their, or their child. Those are the two measures that we are voting on. Um, and that's what we are building on, on what the voters have done in 2002. And again, this is not a conversation that's not gonna end this November. It's going to go on and to see how we can support all of our families in San Francisco, because we have led the way for the more than a decade and we will continue to lead that way um, for all of our uh, jurisdictions. So thank you. Thank you very much for your comments also. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 3rd. Thank you for watching.